and split it in four phases, identifying, presenting and sharing, monitoring and networking. Identifying is nothing more like uh, gathering the content, so in terms of news library items uh, and also cases related to various projects. Uh, phase two, presenting and sharing, it is uploading the materials online, uh, publication and highlighting of all the relevant to the community content, and uh, we start to encourage participants to take active role within the community. Monitoring, uh, basically we uh, take care of uh, updates so that uh, the content is always up to date, and uh, we are also trying to uh, search for various opportunities of offline exchanges like workshops, face-to-face uh, -face meetings, presentations, etc. And networking itself, it's strictly members' interactions, either via blog or using other online, online features, or physical interactions via organized workshops, events, or other presentations. We believe that one of the greatest powers of the e-practice portal is the repository of cases. Cases are written summaries of uh, real projects that are being implemented across Europe and not only. Um, having such a rich database of, of cases, we believe that our portal, portal can, save as a, can serve as a point of reference to to many users, browsing through cases you can get familiar with the challenges that are being met during the implementation of various uh, projects. Um, I would like to show you some examples of the cases. Unfortunately, we have no time to talk about uh, any of them in details, but uh, I think that the Stork project is known to, to most of the people. It has a case study under our portal. I will not go into detail, just uh, whenever you want to publish your own case under e-practice, there is a pre-made uh, template and uh, each case is described uh, it, using the following sections. We have an abstract, which is a short summary, then we are explaining legal policy context, uh, then we have a section that relates to uh, implementation and the management scheme, and uh, a very important at the end, uh, upon project uh, closure or upon certain implementation phase being completed, uh, users usually submit their, their comments, their lessons learned, and uh, this can be very uh, valuable to other users. Here you have some examples of the EID cases. I have chosen the most recent ones from the last uh, few months. Uh, how can you become a member of an EID community? Nothing uh, more, nothing easier than going online and uh, with one click you can join and enjoy all the uh, knowledge that is contained within. Um, except the online activities, we are trying to often organize also offline exchanges. Uh, communication team of our company uh, tries to uh, organize currently uh, there is a there is a there are few events on EID being carried on uh, we organize events usually in one of the three different ways it can be the repractice event which means that the organization from A to Z is carried on by our company or so called assisted events uh, where we just take care of the communication and information dissemination in order to boost participation. Uh, and the third, uh, which is quite new uh, and innovative way, it's so-called World Cafe. Uh, these are events with small number of participants. However, both audience and uh, speakers are chosen very carefully in order to um, initiate uh, discussions. So the presentations are taking, let's say, a quarter or a third of of such an event, and the rest is uh, discussion and uh, opinion exchange. Um, thank you very much for your time, and I hope that uh, you will be visiting us at epractice.eu. Thank you. Thank you questions, delegates? Well, I, I have one. <laughs> How many members are, are there already in the e-practice community?
activities and the practice have uh, the, the number of members varies. I think the EID community has more than 400 members uh, currently. Uh, so it uh, depends on the community, but um, the number can range from, let's say, a few tens up to a few hundred, but this one is around 400. And, uh, I have another question. Can, can the members propose new discussions, new teams? Yes, of course, it's fully interactive, and uh, first of all, to initiate a community, it's also possible. It's just that it requires some procedure. All the procedures are explained under the portal. However, also possible. Once you become a member of the community, you can enjoy full interactivity of the site. So basically you can post uh, blogs, you can post comments to the articles, to the cases, you can publish your own cases. It's fully interactive and you have access to all the resources. Okay, other questions? Okay, so our next speaker is Monsieur Jérôme Lena from Overture and he will talk about the driving license market and how it is moving towards standardization and why 2012 could be a turning point. Okay. And so, good afternoon. Um, for those who don't know about your group, we are a global actor uh, on the smart card business, banking, mobile, and identity. Um, and we are a global company, so worldwide manufacturing sites and also personalization center, uh, which is quite critical when it comes to identity. So that, that's all for Aperture. It was just in case you haven't heard about the company. Uh, we see we are a major actor. Before starting, um, I would like to show you something. And so this, so this, this is a driving license. It's a French driving license. It's mine, and uh, as you can see, it's. So it's a document, it's, it's made of paper, and there's a photo here, and yes, it's me, and it's, it's stick to the documents with some metallic uh, system. So um, I would like to, you to look at this document very closely, because it's, well, it's the last time maybe you see such a document. Uh, because, well, this is a, something of the past. Uh, we are in, on the road, if I may speak so, uh, to see all document looking like that uh, disappear from the surface of the world. And the reason why is that right now uh, there is absolutely no reason for any government to continue <coughs> issuing uh, such document. And as we are going to see, uh, I will show you that everything is available and ready for a full standardization of driving license uh, into well, smart card, well, ID1 format card and hopefully uh, smart cards as we are going to see. So, uh, so the first uh, important news here I want to share with you is that uh, there is a, a fully available international standard uh, that can help any government to define uh, the new driving license they want to, to issue. So it's, of course, it's based on all the other existing ISO standard uh, about the format of the card, about how the contactless interaction should, should go between the card and, and the system, uh, about the testing methods uh, to see if it's resistant enough, and also the last layer, uh, there is an ISO standard for uh, defining how the driving license should look like. So it's, a, it's an old uh, project, actually. Uh, it's a very dorming a uh, working group from the, uh, from the ISO organization that got some kind of wake-up call uh, after uh, uh, September 11, and so uh, now they, they have uh, moved from defining a purely dull uh, paper-based international driving license to something more uh, powerful, as we are going to see. So right now there is everything, there is a, 
part one, so physical characteristic. It was published in 2005. It's currently now under examination, so to update it with more uh, recent uh, uh, security features, let's say. Uh, part two, it was published in 2008, uh, part three, 2009. Uh, still ongoing, but almost ready are the conformity tests, uh, which is well, those of you familiar with the process for the e-passport, we've seen the same kind of uh, uh, organization uh, of the standard. The conformity test is session where uh, we check that everybody has understood the uh, specification correctly. Uh, everybody, I mean the, the chip manufacturer, card manufacturers, uh, readers and systems. Uh, so it's, it's still ongoing for this one. Uh, so the, I would say for the two main points here, uh, the, the first key, key information is the fact that it's an ID1 card format uh, that, been, uh, that has been adopted, so as defined in part one. Uh, and, uh, and also very important information is the fact, it's the last line here, uh, part three ensures that uh, this driving license will be interoperable with uh, uh, the systems and readers uh, already used uh, and defined by the ICAO uh, uh, standardization of the e-passport. And uh, for those of you who have attended here a presentation about the, the complexity of the system to, you need to deploy in order to be able to use the electronic passport, uh, we'll understand that it's a so it's, it's the second uh, reason why I believe that uh, the driving license will, uh, will be the next wave of identity document. Uh, it's because it, it will be able to use the same architecture. So all the investment uh, in terms of uh, uh, IT infrastructure, uh, training of specialists, understanding the mechanism, um, the readers, well, all the equipment will be reusable quite simply uh, with the new uh, chip-based driving license. Uh, what I've summed up here is some of uh, well, the, the kind of attacks uh, that can occur on a chip and the security mechanisms that can be used. Again, uh, the e-passport project has been on for quite some time and uh, the community and the, and the people at the NTWG, so a new technology working group, so defining and thinking about how the e-passport should be, well, they have listed, and, and, and they are listed here, most of the attack that can occur on uh, a chip that you read uh, in a contactless way. Uh, so they are all listed here, the fact that you can uh, changing data, copying the data of the document, uh, reading these data, well, maybe to make a clone or a copy, uh, skimming the data, that means uh, listening to the communication between the card and the reader, uh, reading the bio data whenever it's a fingerprint stored uh, in the chip or skimming this bio data, and the latest one you see here, these entropy attacks. Uh, well, all these problems and issues have been identified with the passport, so why bother uh, inventing a new uh, system uh, to take care of the driving license. So there is absolutely no reason why any government uh, should uh, not use what's available uh, as a standard uh, to build up uh, their driving license system, uh, cashing on uh, this experience from the ICAO. Uh, and third important uh, reason, and, and this is a push towards standardization is the fact that Europe has been working uh, on that for quite some time now. Uh, well, it's about uh, 60 years uh, hard work, I would say. Uh, now we move to uh, the, th the third uh, driving license directive. Uh, I've put here some, some of the details and I know that some of you are quite knowledgeable about identity document and physical security features, and you see here that uh, this is a fully uh, fledged uh, identity document with all the features you need, uh, well, to really bear an identity. So what, what's coming next, and, and I'm quite, well, 
we can bet, and I'm quite sure about that, that uh, we'll see a lot of things going on next year, 2012. Um, first reason why, well, when, when you look at the agenda for the European driving license, we are still expecting some uh, new amending uh, uh, directive uh, about some <coughs> clarification of the data uh, put uh, on the card, and, and also a very important uh, uh, thing here is that there will be a there should be uh, a direct reference to the ISO uh, driving license uh, standard uh, within the European directive. So this is the next step, and next important step is that by the end of 2012 there should be no more. No. Oh. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> No more all driving license issued, so uh, and uh, of course, hopefully, uh, 2035, uh, we all be doing something else elsewhere. Another reason why, so by the way, Europe would be uh, about 250 million uh, driving license. And this is an estimation. Another reason why uh, driving license. Uh, uh, should be the next big project is that well for for e-passport okay it's a, it's done it's still ongoing for the system as you know but it's done um, identity cards and e-identity yes well uh, it could be uh, but well we know that for not every country they, they have a identity card for in France for instance it's not mandatory to have an identity card and uh, in uh, in the UK actually. Uh, they had a, a great problem with the public opinion uh, because the people are totally against uh, the idea of identity cards. So, my bet is, and again, this is an, an estimate, uh, we are looking at a quite large market, and uh, well, we should see it uh, coming to, to birth uh, next year, hopefully. And last word <coughs> beyond uh, driving licenses. The driving license card is an identity document uh, for the drivers of road vehicle. Uh, there are two other applications that are ancillary to it. It's the registration cards, which are uh, certificate of ownership, and also the tachograph cards. Now, tachograph is uh, very specific to Europe and also a group of countries, including Turk, Turk, uh, Turkey. They are part of the 17 countries that signed the, the agreement. And right now, the technology, I'm really talking right now, the technology is available to have both uh, the ISO driving license application on, on a card sitting next to a certificate signed by a proper authority and, and playing the role of the registration card. And of course, the possibility to update uh, the registration card on the driving license. And maybe in a very near future, we will see also the possibility to have the tachograph application sitting next to a driving license application. So I can't wait to see 2012 occurring. And again, this is your last chance. Have a quick look at it, and you will never see it again. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, yes, please. The data that you show are regarding Europe or the world? I mean, worldwide. You, you, data, uh, you, mean, you mean the number? Uh, yes. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's actually. It's actually worldwide, and it's it's an estimation based on the number of vehicle in circulations. So it's the number of vehicles, so they should be maybe a bit less. Well, okay, I, I make it for one billion documents. No, I can. Also I can. <laughs> right. Well, you say uh, in 2003, 2004, uh, you probably uh, all the driver license will be not anymore on paper. Oh, it's for Europe. It's for, for Europe, Europe. yes. Okay. Yes, okay. it's for Europe. Well, that, that's what the directive says now. Your uh, area. Yeah, but it's for Europe, yes. Thank you for the question. Any other question? Okay. Thank you, Jerome Lemna.
Our next speaker will be Dr. Urs Favre uh, from Troop uh, AG. Uh, Dr. Urs Favre will speak about absolute identity. <laughs> 